Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. I am proud to be here to sign House Bill 1175, the Lobbying Reform Act, which will update and modernize the way lobbying is done here in Harrisburg. This legislation is a piece of the effort to change the way business is done in Harrisburg. It's to create a more open and transparent government for the people of Pennsylvania. This legislation addresses a very big concern among Pennsylvania citizens. And that concern is that Harrisburg politicians are more interested in the opinions of special interests than in their constituents. And that concern, I'm afraid, is justified. When I arrived here, I found an outsized influence from outside interests on the business that gets done in this building. The influence of these lobbyists touched every aspect of this government. And that's why I'm doing things differently. I want to ensure that my administration has the best interests of Pennsylvanians at heart rather than the best interests of special interests in their representatives. This is crucial because to govern effectively, we need to rebuild trust in government. And we need to make sure that citizens across the Commonwealth know that when we pass bills, when we create laws, we're doing so on their behalf. That's why one of my first acts as governor was to institute a gift ban for all employees in the executive branch. That's why I refused to take a salary. These steps are important because they show that we're here in Harrisburg to govern, not to enrich ourselves or hobnob with well-heeled special interests. And that effort is strengthened by House Bill 1175. This bill, which I'm going to sign into law today, modernizes our lobbying rules, making them more transparent and more open, and it enforces stiffer penalties for not playing by the rules. This bill will make lobbying disclosures entirely electronic so that the people of Pennsylvania can see for themselves the lobbyists who are registered, what they are doing, and how they're spending their money on the causes they represent. This will allow the Department of State to process these filings faster and, a more, and in a more open and transparent way. This bill also strengthens penalties and fines that special interests will have to pay for not playing by the rules. It doubles the fines for not filing reports on expenditures to the Department of State, and it increases daily fines for failing to report. Additionally, this bill mandates that all lobbying disclosures must be posted within seven days of their filing so that our citizens have the most up-to-date information on what lobbyists are doing right here in these halls. This legislation is long overdue. It's going to help create a more open, honest, and again, transparent government here in Harrisburg, one that is more accountable to the people, the citizens of Pennsylvania. I am glad to sign this bill today, which represents a continuation of all of our efforts in the administration and in the legislature to create a more open and honest government and to change the way that business is done here in Harrisburg. If we want the people of Pennsylvania to believe that the work being done in this building is being done on their behalf and for their benefit, and for their benefit alone, we must ensure that they can trust the, that well-heeled special interests do not call the shots here. Our constituents need to be sure that when they send a representative to Harrisburg, they're sending someone who's going to be working on their behalf. This bill helps to make our citizens confident that they are the ones in charge in Harrisburg. So I want to thank our partners in the legislature for passing this bill and for, making, for working to make a more open government. And I especially want to congratulate and thank Representative Cutler, who's the prime sponsor of this bill and who's going to speak in just a minute, who worked diligently to get this to my desk. And I pledge to continue to partner with Representative Cutler and all those who want to make this government more transparent. I pledge to continue to work to change the culture of this town for the better, and I pledge to continue to work to make sure our citizens know that their opinions are the ones that matter the most. So thank you, and now I'd like to introduce Representative Cutler. Brian? Good afternoon. Thank you very much for everybody being here. I'd like to take this time to personally thank Representative Brandon Newman. Uh, he was my Democratic counterpart on this proposal as we've worked through it the last 10 or 11 years. Uh, he was a good partner who has since uh, moved on to become a member of the judiciary out in Washington County. I think this bill and this proposal, as the governor indicated, really demonstrates what we can all do when we're willing to work together for the betterment of all the citizens of the Commonwealth. I've always said throughout this entire process as we've worked through each legislative session, if people believe in what we do, 
In order for them to do that, in order for them to believe in the product, they have to believe in the process. This makes the process more accountable, makes it more transparent, and most importantly, it also assists the lobbyists because they now will get an electronic receipt when they file. Much like we track packages that we order from Amazon, or we file other reports online or make payments online, it will close the loop so that we'll have a definitive proof of when things were filed. I think it's important to increase that accountability on both sides. I'd like to thank the governor and his office. They were fabulous to work with, as well as my colleagues in the House and the Senate. It's been a long time coming, and I'm certainly looking forward to this, and I'll now turn it over to the secretary. Thank you, Representative Cutler. Thank you, Governor. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today for today's signing into law of House Bill 1175 and to support your strong commitment to ensuring an open, transparent government that works. In addition to election administration, campaign finance reporting and disclosure, professional license, licensure, and the registration of corporate and charitable organizations, the Department of State oversees lobbying disclosure, registration, and reporting. We currently have 2,966 lobbyists, lobbying firms, and principals registered in Pennsylvania. The Department of State aims to provide the highest standards of accurate, courteous, and timely service. House Bill 1175 is, a, is the latest example of how we continue to seek ways to streamline our operations and improve services with the electronic filing of registrations and expense reports. House Bill 1175's requirement that all lobbying disclosures be filed electronically will help transition, transition approximately 20% of filings that are currently received on paper. This bill also increases the administrative penalties that can be imposed upon uh, under the Lobbying Disclosure Act. And some of the legislation's uh, changes, including the new penalties, will be effective immediately, while the rest will be implemented over the next 60 days. Thank you to everyone who worked to get this bill passed. It helps to improve government operations reduces Commonwealth expenses, and advances the law's most important value, transparency. We look forward to supporting other opportunities to achieve, achieve the same outcomes. Thank you for the opportunity to participate today. Thank you very much. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to sit down here, and I'm going to sign the bill. Then I'm going to come back here and answer questions on topic. And just in case there are questions not on topic, I'll take those questions, too. But first, we're going to sign the bill. Okay, now, any questions on topic? Yes. So in the, uh, your budget, there's about $500,000 coming from some lobbyist $300 biennial fee. Is that what's supposed to pay for the upgrade to the system? I think it's referred sure. to the charities application. No, I, I look, it says there's a $300 lobbyist biennial fee that's supposed to provide a $500,000 augmentation for lobbying disclosure in the budget? That, um, that's not related to it. Not related to this. Okay, so you're, you're going with your current well, money. Yeah, the, this, uh, and maybe Representative Cutler would talk about this, but I think basically this is, this is an attempt to do a better job of making more transparent the filings that are already enshrined in current regulations and to make sure that, that the, the regulations are actually being adhered to on a timely basis. Is that... Yeah. Yes, the governor's correct. Uh, in terms of the current approach, uh, much of it can be 
use utilizing existing resources. Uh, there was a slight fiscal note that was attached to it by both the House and the Senate, uh, mainly related to the computer upgrades that would be required to send the electronic receipts that I referenced during my comments. Uh, but the idea is to try to use existing resources to cover these upgrades because I think it's something that everyone expects, uh, you know, in terms of streamlining the process and hopefully those efficiencies can then be driven back into the system. Yes. The, um, you mentioned that 20% 20, 20 of lobbying organizations file on paper now. <laughs> so the majority are already doing it electronically. Robert, yes. you want to jump in? Yes, that's correct. So this, this bill would force the, the other 20% to, to transmit electronically. I was just wondering how many, um, how many scoff laws do we have in our lobbying community that, that aren't filing you know, in a timely way? I, I don't have that information available. I guess I was just wondering, like, what's, what is driving it besides good, good transparent government? What's driving it? I, I think there's a sense that, that there is less than 100% uh, compliance with the regulations, and this will help us get closer to 100%. Right. Yeah, there's, um, I believe last year, I think there was 14 is the number that sticks in my mind. We had pulled the numbers because uh, actually Sam Janesh, who I saw it in the audience, had asked me this earlier, if I remember correctly. And we had, br I had the break breakdown for each year. Um, it is improving, uh, but one of the other areas of concerns regarding uh, the current system is there's some uncertainty in what to do if the computer system's down versus, you know, the law seems to imply, and we clear this up with this language, uh, thanks to everybody's involvement and in highlighting the problem. The law seems to imply once you start filing by computer, you can never file by paper, which implies even if it's down. Uh, so by streamlining it, it makes it a lot clearer that, you know, filing is of the utmost importance and then we can get everything in. Uh, but the, the number of individuals who are non-compliant is improving, but again, uh, I think it's important that we recognize pe for people to have faith in the process at, in the product, uh, you have to be as transparent as you can on each of these issues. So, Jan, we'll get you. And I can email it to you as well. Anything else on topic? Yes. It's fairly common. How many other states have a system like this? How unique is this to Pennsylvania? That's a good question, Robert. I'm going to look. We're the out. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. You say yeah, we're, we're the out. We're, we're finally catching up. Uh, in terms of some of the reporting. Um, you know, there was some issues related to the lobbying disclosure law when it was first implemented. Uh, there were some constitutional questions that were raised. It's been, it's been redone. Uh, this significantly improves us and brings us more in line with other states. Anything else? Okay, any questions not on topic? Thanks a lot, guys. Yep. I think this is me. Yes. Uh, should we expect your administration to submit a proposed map to the court tomorrow for congressional districts? I, I haven't decided. Uh, I'm a party to the litigation, so as a party to the litigation, I have uh, standing to, to submit a map, and, and if I do, I will do it by 5 o'clock tomorrow. If you don't, then how can you say that you're working to get a fair map? Um, the, the good question. The, the, the court gave me the uh, responsibility for looking at the map that was submitted to me by the legislature and to decide whether I thought that met the standard of a fair map. I've done that. I rejected the map. Uh, and uh, as far as I know, that was specifically what they asked me to do. Uh, as a defendant in this case, as governor of Pennsylvania, I have standing to actually present my own map. So I think I, I can say that I've already done what the court has asked me to do in terms of judging and serving as the arbiter of whether the map that I got was fair. I decided that I, it was not. Uh, and uh, if I go and do something beyond that, that, that's something I'm doing because I'm a party to the litigation. Why wouldn't you submit a map? I mean, what, what, what good reason is there for you not to submit a map? I'm, I'm not sure. As, as I say, I haven't, I haven't made the decision yet. But you're not sure what reason there is to not submit a map? Yeah. I'm, I mean, the, there, is, there are other people with standing who may or may not. I, I don't know. Who is going to submit a map or not? I think uh, uh, the, that I have that that option, and, and if I do it, it'll be by tomorrow at five o'clock. Um, Governor, in uh, you know the pursuit of uh, fair partisan representation, as you see it, um, are you okay with a map splitting more counties and municipalities than seen in the GOP proposal in order to make one that you see as more politically fair? Yeah, I think uh, one of the tough things. I'm, I want a fair map. And, and contiguity, compactness, 
uh, minimizing splits, those are all parts of a fair map. Uh, and I think whatever the fair map ends up being, uh, uh, I think it, it minimizes uh, the amount, the number of splits, and, and uh, that's important. It's not the only criterion, however. So would you be okay with there being more splits if it's, as you see it, you know, fair for Democrats? As I say, if I pres provide a, a map, it'll be by 5 o'clock tomorrow, and rather than dealing in speculation or hypotheticals, I'm going to do what I end up doing. Yeah. Governor, are you satisfied with the court selecting what they feel is a fair map, and do you feel as though there might be any advantage to asking the court for an extension to try to work this out in a negotiated product with the legislature? I, I did not have a problem, and I don't have a problem with the time frame the court laid out. I think in this case, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court has an obligation to uh, make sure that their democracy is running according to the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That's their job. Uh, I think that's what they have been doing here. That's what they're trying to do here. Uh, and, and I think they've given us a timeline. They've given us the, the rules, the constraints that we're operating under. And, and uh, uh, I, I think that we ought to be honoring that, uh, those uh, constraints. Anything else? Yeah. Governor, how um, much just total have you spent on outside counsel as it relates to the math issue? Uh, you mean you mean all the like the mathematician from Tufts and all the people like that? How much? The, the administration has hired to work on. Yeah, uh, I I don't have that, but I'll I'll get that for you. Yeah. The GOP legislators said they need to see your uh, map from you so they know how to respond. Why not give them one? facilitate negotiation ahead of the deadline. Right. First of all, I don't have one. That's one reason. Uh, the second reason is that's not what the Supreme Court said. The Supreme Court said they will give me a map and I will be the arbiter as to whether it's fair or not. So I'm not sure uh, why uh, the rules change in, in the, the course of this. I, I'm, I've exp expressed my willingness to, to work with the legislature, the Republicans have met with them. Uh, to uh, work with them to get to a fair map, and I, I continue to stand by that, but the time is running out. Tomorrow at 5 o'clock is the deadline. Any meetings scheduled with them tomorrow to try to meet some sort of agreement before this 5 o'clock? Not at this point. Yeah. Um, does your administration have the sophistication, or any of your consultants have the sophistication to draw a map? I, I, actually, I think of the uh, you know, an elementary school students have the sophistication to draw a fair map. No, it's a serious question. No, I'm not. I'm. That's a serious I mean, answer. There's actually been an elementary school class that actually drafted a map that that was pretty fair. Uh, I think this is not something that that takes a computer. It doesn't take uh, a, a wizard. It takes somebody who actually wants to do something fair. And my goal is to have a fair map. I think the Supreme Court's goal is to have a fair map. And I'm hoping that everybody in this process wants to end up at the same place. We will probably have some disagreements over where the fairness is. Evidently, I have a disagreement with the Republicans in the legislature. But I think we can get to a fair map and, and that, that as, as citizens, we, we have the ability to draw a fair map and to judge whether the map is, in fact, fair. So are you saying your administration does, in fact, have the sophistication, the software, whatever it takes to draw a map and submit it? Yeah, uh, or, or the people that, that, that I have engaged to, to work with me, yeah. Governor, Anything else? I'm not all thinking about moving the primary date. I mean, or, and like, you know, as this goes on and if, if there's a challenge or whatever, you know, <laughs> you submit or you decide, at what point would you say, okay, we got to push the primary date back a little bit? Yeah, I, I, I haven't made that decision at this point, uh, but that is an option. Yeah. Republicans are suggesting court picks the map, it would create this constitutional crisis. I assume you disagree with that. Can you explain sort of why what your thought process is? Okay. That? First of all, I'm not a lawyer, uh, and I'm certainly not a constitutional lawyer. Uh, but it seems to me that, that the Supreme Court does have the ability uh, in a case uh, affecting the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the democracy as we practice it here in the Commonwealth to weigh in. And I think that's what they've done. So as a, as a, as someone who watches what different branches of government do to pass legislation, but also to serve as stewards of our democracy, seems to me that, that they're acting uh, in a responsible way here.